Hey there, everyone. That sexy nerd is back again. And uh, uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this review, but I'm really curious to see what he says. And everybody's kind of told me what happens, but I still want to see the movie for myself. And like, basically, I'll just use this video as an outlier of like, hey, when when do you want to see uh do you want to see me review this movie or what or i mean uh react to this movie or what because i would love to react to it. it's the flesh and uh yeah man this movie was like marked with controversy because of ezra miller uh the, the whole shebang and everything and it didn't do well surprisingly I, I cannot believe it didn't do well because it looks so good but I guess we'll, uh, I'll have some idea of why, but, you know, the whole movie's gonna get spoiled for me, but I still want to watch the movie regardless, so let me know in the comments if you want me to do the movie, but other than that, I got nothing much else to say, let's just get into the video, and remember, please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content, and subscribe if you think I deserve it, and let's do this thing, y'all. Hello, I'm the Stoush Greg, I remember it so you don't have to. You might have noticed there's been a lot of movies about multiverses recently, and I'm trying to explain why people are starting to get sick of them. I'm yeah, still well. not following. Okay, multiverse movies are like a bowl of oatmeal. At first, it's kind of passable, but you get tired of it after a while. So you need to do something to sweeten it up, like a banana or a Spider-Man movie. But then everybody <laughs> thinks they can do it, so they try it with different fruits, like raisins. But raisins aren't bananas. Raisins aren't bananas. Well, raisins not. aren't bananas. I'm still not following. Perhaps I can explain. Who are you? I'm you, but from a different dimension where we like emo music. Oh, how is it? Not great. I'm still not following. Okay, multiverse movies are like a book. If you read it as one story, it works. But if you jump around to random moments... Like 2023 Flash meeting 1989 Batman... It's not gonna come together oh. as well. Where do you fall on My Chemical Romance? Will you get off that already? Nobody could. I'm uh -huh. still not following. Perhaps I can explain. Who oh, well. You? I'm you from a dimension where hot pockets are cold pockets. Oh, how does that... It doesn't affect us at all. I'm no, still not well. following. Okay, still imagine the multiverse movies are this pen. Uh-huh. A pen that wrote all this science babble that's supposed to explain things. I'm Ooh. following. It'd be like wow. how you're tired of this trope where analogies simplify the multiverse. I'm still not following. Perhaps I can explain. What dimension are you from? Nowhere, I'm just standing. Oh. oh. Okay, multiverse movies are like Swiss cheese. Are you gonna take a, a bite out of that? Exactly! Do I want to? I'm still not following. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you're a Spider-Man movie, everyone seems to be sick of multiverses. And arguably, yeah. the one that suffered the most from this was The Flash. The film was hyped up quite a bit from new head of the DCEU, James Gunn. But the responses from critics, audiences, and especially the box office was less than stellar. Whoa, There's a lot the of reasons hell? people like to speculate why this film bombed as hard as it did. As for Miller's wanted poster of crimes, the constantly delayed production, the fact that a lot of these DCEU characters are on their way out, but what I've heard constantly is that people are just getting sick of multiverses. I guess as trends go, this would be a rather short run, but maybe part of it is that it's a genre within a genre. Most multiverse movies are in the superhero genre, which people are finally starting to lose interest in. Not that superheroes are dead or anything, but we're around 15 years of them really exploding in film. It's going to decrease at some point. Where something like the Spider-Man movies combine crossovers that seem poetic and make sense, The Flash combines a lot of things that sometimes go and other times feel like there's ulterior motives. I know this is loosely based on Flashpoint, but mm. half the time it feels like it's either cashing in on past properties or setting up future ones. And again, I think people are becoming distracted by this strategy. I'm not gonna lie though, I like the film. Just enough. It's a mess, and I'm not surprised when somebody doesn't like it, but the stuff that works is unique enough and emotional enough that I am glad I checked it out. I'm just on the cusp of saying I don't think it works, but I think it pulls through. Like, by a hair. It's a lot to unpack, so let's take a look. This is- Wait, what universe is he from? I'm not, I just moved to the couch. Oh, I'm still not following. Don't worry, yeah. I'll walk it through. Thank you. The Flash. <laughs> Oh we open with Barry Allen, played by Ezra Miller, getting breakfast when he suddenly gets a call from Alfred, played again by Jeremy I. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in sort of a rush for the sandwich. You can't rush a good sandwich, dude. Like you can't rush a movie that's really gonna underperform. 
I confess, the first time I watched this, I missed the title starting up until he's interrupted. And admitted, so did you, because nobody what? saw this movie twice. Are you actively eating that candy bar? I need you here now. Barry. What is up with the costume? Yes, I do like the idea that the fastest man in the world has issues making time for everything, which feeds even more into the time travel angle later, as he makes his way to Gotham City, or as we're coming to know it, Philly, Chicago, Detroit. Philly, Chicago, Detroit. Gas and water pipes ruptured in the basement. Right. He has to take over for Batman, played again by Ben Affleck. Play briefly by Black Widow. Oh, hey. You can handle the hospital, Barry. Somebody has to save the rest of the world, so I was gonna do that. Wow, I never thought I'd say this, but I missed the really fake sounding Batman voice. Yeah, what the hell I happened mean, okay, to this I voice? guess it's not that bad compared to other Batman voices, and let's face it, this is an impressive Batman game demo. Oh, I mean, uh, look at the real Batman doing all these oh, real God. stunts. <laughs> he is lagging. Running on empty, Alfred. The effects don't get much better as Barry has to save a bunch of falling babies while trying to get energy for oh speed my because God. he has heat. There's a baby. This is a funny moment that Claire. <laughs> what? It's a baby shower. What? Okay, yeah, the whole thing looks awful, though, man. What happened to the effects? We should have had Zack Snyder just. Do this film, man. That's that's awful. It really shows the limitations of his power and how they work, but the I'm hell? sorry. Were half these babies already microwaved before they were memed? The director famously tweeted some of the effects were meant to look weird, as he wanted things when he was in the speedy realm to look otherworldly. Oh. Okay, fair, but how do you explain moments not in the speedy realm? I'll admit I give superhero movies a little more leeway when it comes to effects as I want them to look appealing as opposed to real. Oh, but wow. But unless you're a Polar Express character farting a scene from Food Fight, Legit. I don't think you're going to find this appealing. You should seek the services of a mental health professional. The Justice League is not very good at that part yet. Trust me. Yeah, why don't we just start a count of shirt-hugging sure moments reminding us of the real world, Ezra Miller? Oh, Fire wait, what? And we the Justice League is not very good. You should seek the services of a mental health professional. The Justice League is not very good at that part yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Why don't we just start a count of shirt hugging moments reminding us of the real world, Ezra Miller? <laughs> fire the editor who said, yeah, leave that in. <laughs> right after you fire most of your effects team. <laughs> it looks like Batman needs a hand, but thankfully an old friend is there to help. Sorry I'm late. Oh, yeah. I only appear exclusively in cameos now. Oh. This, of course, leads to some classic oversharing whenever the lasso of truth is used. I developed this all-powerful persona to compensate for my childhood trauma. I and do have childhood trauma. trauma. The lasso of truth never gets old. I hate to say it, but she's right. Those jokes usually work. The hell? Ah, shit. That in-text scam finally caught up with Peter. This way I can imagine she's alive. Out there living her life. Actually, that's Barry's father, Henry, played this time by Ron Livingston who was wrongfully arrested for the murder of his wife, who was killed while he was out getting tomatoes. Ron the footage Barry uncovers, though, doesn't show a clear shot of his face. Even though he's wearing the same clothes the cops must have seen him in that day, what are the chances of someone else wearing the exact same thing there? I don't know, it's not enough. And this causes Barry to have a flashback to the last time he saw his mother, played by Maribel Verdoux. How many calculations can you think of with an answer of 24? There are a bajillion answers. Not every problem has a solution. Sometimes you just have to let go. Remember that if you ever go time traveling. She asks Henry to pick up tomatoes Jeez. at the store, and while she's Heavy out, accent. somebody sneaks in thinking the place is empty and kills her. Barry! Call 911 now! That's right, Barry, 911 is outside! What are you doing?! so fast he enters the Snyderverse for a second and figures he can travel so fast he can go through time. And okay, as much flack as this scene gets for its effects, this is one of the most creative time travel sequences I've ever seen. Nine out of ten times it's a bright portal that just takes you to that place in time or the footage is rewound and fast forward. But we uh -huh. go into some Star Trek IV territory here where shit gets weird, distinct, yet does have a logic to it. This is an example of how the effects don't have to look real, they just have to look good. And the layout of this is so unique and so visually interesting, it's one of my favorite time traveling sequences ever. Wow. But because The Flash has never seen any movies he doesn't get, this is a bad idea. You step mm. on the wrong blade of grass, you have no idea what the consequences to that could be. Do you know how many nipples I could be covered in? <laughs> I can fix things. 
you could also destroy everything. Hmm. DCEU joke or Ezra Miller joke? There's nothing broken with you that needs to be fixed. Definitely it Ezra Miller joke. <laughs> Seriously though, Affleck still does a good job for the short time he's on screen. I know, I like Unlike Affleck. Wonder Woman or later Aquaman, it makes sense for him to be here as they do have a bit of a connection with their past and he'll meet up with another version of him later. Mm. Barry does try to have something close to a personal life though, as an old school friend appears to be an old school friend that appears. What? Yeah, she doesn't do much in this. This footage should have finally supported my dad's alibi. Three wives school friend? for a can of tomatoes. Sounds like half the Thanksgivings in America. <laughs> He gets the idea that if he puts the tomatoes in his mother's cart, it won't offset things too much and she'd still be alive. Wait a minute. I thought they just met in the Snyderverse movie. That's that's what it seemed like, right? What are they? Are they pretending that the Snyderverse movie didn't exist? No. That the Snyder Cut didn't exist? What are we doing? Great! I can change it so Tucker Carlson feels like he can buy drinks for the M&Ms again! Uh, he puts the tomatoes in the cart, but on his way back, Dickless Doomsday arrives and pushes him into a different point in time. What? His mother is still alive, his father isn't in jail, and an unsufferable version of him roams the streets. Think about having a mushroom flashback? Is that a thing? How old are you? <laughs> oh. Okay, so there's two big takeaways from their interactions. Oh, God. One is, for all the issues with the effects, the two berries interacting are spectacular. Really think about the fact that all these scenes had to be shot twice and both the acting and the effects never make you question it. It's not like there's only a few scenes where they're together either. There's a ton. And I almost never question the legitimacy of it. It really looks like they're interacting with each other. Well, it's right. like if multiplicity didn't have awkward effects they were trying to show off, but then a bad effect like Jar Jar was distractingly <laughs> on screen. Bottom line, these moments deserve a lot of technical praise. The second thing to take away, though, Young Barry's the worst. Mom! Yeah, I imagine. Broski. Powers! <laughs> I get what they're doing. Like, if you see your younger self, you're going to be more annoying than you remember. But Young Barry is way too stupid and has a laugh like Mozart's snowballing Elmer Fudd. <laughs> His whole character is that laughing guy from the opening of Fifth Element. <laughs> I've never seen this. I could drug you, and then you'd pass out, you'd wake up, and you'd forget that anything ever happened, and it wouldn't be wrong, right? No. <laughs> Wait, what? You'd wake up, and you'd forget that anything ever happened, and it wouldn't be wrong, right? No. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. That said, time travel is a surprisingly good way to make this an origin story, as old Barry has to make sure young Barry gets his power so he really? can still save people, which involves him getting struck by lightning in a lab. We see a cool effect where his cells can vibrate so fast they can go through walls. Oh. Which plays very little into this story, but screw you, I think it's cool. And they the do that? Goes through both of them, causing young Barry to get powers and old Barry to lose his tooth. And his powers. What? Oh. Why did nobody <laughs> tell me I look like a drunk T-1000 ice skating? Yes, he's always Barry, looked like that. of course, that. loves his new powers, but doesn't know his limitations yet. Oh, boy. What did you do? Oh. <laughs> Are we always this sleepy and hungry and... Are you naked? I mean, you're in college, so yeah. Mm. It turns out this is around the time when General Zod, played with passing interest by Michael Shannon, passing invades interest? the planet looking for Superman. My name is General oh, Zod. Can't tell if TV, static, or just normal CGI character in this movie. Hmm. Barry remembers saving his first civilian around this time. I couldn't get his dad. Really? That was all I could do to save that one kid. But wait, you never actually saved anyone before. I'm just oh. assuming they're going back to Snyder version. Yeah, all right. The from his roommates, who just love Warner Brothers stuff, that wow. his universe has been greatly altered and there's no superhumans but himself. This leads to some good laughs when he's trying to find the Justice League. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Thomas. Hey. Yes. And your wife is the Queen of Atlantis? Uh. Very funny, I saw. Wait, did a Star Wars show take over like half of your Star Wars show? <laughs> they do find out there's a Batman, though who I guess just leaves his mansion open. Dude, you really could have incorporated the walking through walls power here. Yeah, what the hell? Well, across this world's version of Bruce Wayne, played by Michael Keaton. Who the hell are you? The guy who lives here. Now, I do like seeing Michael Keaton back, but I will admit, I don't think this is the same as the Burton version. There are similarities, but there's a few 
too many things that don't quite add up. Zod exists in this universe, Batman's not needed anymore because this Gotham City is too safe. This is how 89 Batman paints? I'm sorry, I don't buy it. There's a good callback to Barry and Bruce's first introduction that's then ruined by this joke. Wait, he's Batman? Bruce Wayne is Batman? It's like the Snyder Flash talking with the weed in Flash. I'm just waiting for him to erupt into a routine about brunch. And we're introduced to three overused tropes. The old bitter hero explaining how time travel doesn't work, and as I mentioned, an analogy for the multiverse. Present, new, future. Yeah. Time doesn't work like that. How do you know? You haven't done it! Oh, uh, yeah. So what did happen in between these two movies? <laughs> the multiverse. <laughs> Some strands run almost parallel. There will be inevitable intersections. I actually do like him using the spaghetti to explain the multiverse, and I especially like the tomatoes is what screws everything up. Oh. It's a hot mess. Not sure if that was intentional or not. But of course Bruce doesn't want to help because that's just how these bitter old hero stories have to go now. Will you help us? No. Pass. Pass. <laughs> Let me know when you need Birdman, though. That might still have some Oscar bait on it. Probably. The two berries go into the Batcave to find the Bat computer, the Batmobile, and Joker's laughing box. What? Wow, neat. I don't care. And old Barry tells young <laughs> Barry he should appreciate what he has after comparing him to his mother. Sorry, Mom. Shut up. You have no idea how lucky you are. You take everything for granted. You don't even appreciate. Yeah, just play. You know you're waiting for it. Jeez. Barry wins Bruce over. It's a lot. Fast when he is. says one of the inevitable cross sections is every Bruce has an Alfred. Inevitable intersections are something none of the theories could have anticipated, because how do you explain that except for... fate? I know I should feel something here, but all I'm thinking now is, what if Keaton is this universe's Alfred? Like, Batman died and Alfred lay low, and then he just told these two people who broke in that he's Batman? <laughs> Dude, that's the version I'm telling myself this is! Because I'll be honest, it's a little better than what we got. Really? After Bruce goes to his bat suits not in the bat cave. Seems like a waste of a trip, but I don't know, I guess you can't have too many. He shows up in the cape and cowl and It looks weird. I think Keaton is killing it as Bruce Wayne, but when he has to put on that outfit at 71 years old, especially 71. in a movie that doesn't shoot him in the way that outfit is supposed to be shot, it looks pretty silly. Sometimes from a distance it looks alright, like when they go to Russia to locate a supposedly captured Superman to take on Zod. Why is it so cold? It's the Arctic, Barry. Why do I have skin? Do chickens God. know they're delicious? Am I Batman too? <laughs> this might hurt. Agreed, this CGI fight is gonna be painful to watch. As you'd imagine, the fighting doesn't look that great. It kinda looks like Pixar presents Injustice. But it gets a little huh. fun when they discover it's not Superman they captured, but rather Supergirl. Girl. Played by Sash kal -El. Again, the effects don't look real here, but they are fun. Leading to some creative camera work and some cool moves. Jesus. Once she takes them all out, they get her back to the manor where we get, in my opinion, the most Batman scene from Keaton. Didn't that just feel like Batman for a second? Mm. He doesn't even have the mask on, but something about the way he looked at himself, like, he didn't miss this, yeah. but he also kind of did at the same time. It's a brief moment, but it really works. We came to this planet looking for a safe place to live, and they put me in a cage. A lot of humans are dicks. Supergirl is nursed back to health, and despite not being much of a character He's on the wrong. page, I think the acting and cool costume do give her a good identity. She's not amazing or anything, but I wouldn't mind seeing more of her in another film. But I'm not a human. With that said, her scenes are pretty rushed, as she too says pfft to humanity and takes off. We get a nice talk between Bruce and Barry that once again shows, despite his awkwardness in the Batsuit, Keaton has Bruce Wayne down perfect. In another timeline, I could see these two working in a Batman Beyond. Yes! I need that. Putting on a cape and fighting crime would bring my parents back. You actually did it. You brought my parents back. No, Bruce, I didn't. Can you take me to my mommy? Bruce, you're scaring me. I sleep upside down, you know. <laughs> they try to recreate Barry getting his powers just as Supergirl has yeah. a comically rushed change of heart and suddenly wants to help. Oh, so we're doing the, the Flashpoint Again, to their credit, they do a good job visually showing why she wants to help as they recreate him saving her with her saving him. I got you. I've 
got you. Oh, it's a good talk about how she was sent to protect Kal-El. But since his craft didn't make it, saving these lives might atone for it. Krypton was a beautiful place. We are people of hope. Not more. We're also people of better greens green keying, but these effects are part of the course by now. <laughs> they of course ask Bruce if he's interested in joining as well. Are you in? You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. Let's get- I retract my statement, the world's not worth that forced callback. <laughs> Young Barry alters the bat suit to look like a flash suit, which is pretty funny. They make their what? way to the desert to take on Zod, and... You know, screw it. I think this fight's pretty fun. Really? The bat wing can do some cool tricks. Having two flashes run around looks pretty awesome, and... What's this? A super person saving people? Well, this certainly isn't the Man of Steel universe. Uh. True, a lot of it looks like the climax to Sonic 2, but... I didn't care that looked like a cartoon because it was colorful and creative, and I think the same rules apply here. Also, it does a great impression of current Warner Brothers. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. When what? She discovers it's her blood Zod needs to whatever dumb plot Man of Steel had again. She tries to take uh. him out, discovering kal -El was killed by Zod. <laughs> Stop <laughs> wildly coyoteing me. <laughs> oh, what the? It's killed, as does Batman. What? You could tell from Barry's underreaction. <laughs> No! The hell was that? That's not watching a no! friend die, that's answering across the street. Hey Barry, you want a taco from this food truck? No! Got it. <laughs> it's a no. <laughs> Young Barry uh, says, wait a minute, I got all the time, time I, I want, I got a time, time machine, machine, and decides to turn yeah. time back to do it again. No matter what though, there's no timeline where this film's a success. I mean, they saved the day. We can't bring you back, can we? You already did. Tell your obnoxious other you, you were right about me. <laughs> Young Barry keeps trying to go back to fix things, but no matter what, the world is doomed to fail. We really? discover the creature that pushed Barry out of the time loop was Young Barry spending years trying to fix the past. I've got it almost figured out. What How the long hell? Have you been doing this? Time is inconsequential. So on the one hand, I like Barry as ultimately the villain as I feel like we've been learning to both love and hate him over these movies, so it does feel appropriate. I also like it cuts to the little boy and father from before, as if to indicate by trying to change the past where at least one of them lives, now they both die. But it is odd watching this world and characters you've gotten to know just crumble or straight up disappear. You could argue that emphasizes the lesson more, and yeah, sure, fair enough. Except later they show that going back in time does fix some things, so it's all over the map! But heck with that, it's time to go into the cameoverse. As Barry's actions are destroying other dimensions. Oh my god! Some of these cameos, I'm sad to say, are ruined by the bad effects. Christopher Reeves and Helen Slater look like those 3D printed sculptures you can oh, get of yourself shit. at the mall. But that's not enough to ruin this goddamn cameo! For Cage, as we all know, is an always functioning special effect. Even when he's malfunctioning. Do you act like me? Huh? What? Go back to the original bomb you the were hell? in, you son of a bitch. Wait, there's a spider in this multiverse. Does that suddenly mean it makes it good? As you put together, Barry finally decides to go back and remove the tomatoes, meaning his mother will once again be murdered. You know, I'm just a random lady in a store. I don't want to hack. Sure. What? And I'll just say it, this is the scene that saved the movie for me. Really? Miller's acting, the dialogue, and even lack of dialogue make this a really powerful scene. Sometimes it's a bit on the nose, but the acting from these two feels so genuine and loving. Even though in the scene they care about each other in different ways they're not even fully aware of yet. Your mom must be grateful you came to visit her. She's very lucky to have you. I especially love when he uses his speed to put the tomatoes back, but then he takes the time to embrace a literal frozen moment in time. I loved you first. When I got to this point, mm. I finally said, okay, I'm recommending this, because this is a moment people really shouldn't miss. Yeah, I, when he I gotta back, watch it. Everything looks exactly how it was, and Barry learns his lesson, he can't change uh, the past. Except that he totally except changed he it, right? he totally did. Yeah, now the father looks up when he gets the tomatoes, so it's good that he did all this? I don't know. Well, at least we'll find out in the sequel who the killer is. Some things we just need to let go. Hey, remember why huh. Superman works alone? Bruce! I'm pulling up now. Oh my god. What's wrong with you? 
<laughs> yeah, I was in this, so it counts. Shut up. <laughs> and that was The Flash. Not gonna lie, I'd totally be on board if he fought him next. Oh, wow. Like I said, I'm not shocked when somebody doesn't like this film. It uh, is, how Keaton put it, It's a hot mess. For the creative moments, the heartfelt moments, the uh, few comedic moments, the many well-acted moments, and the moments when the effects are legitimately good or visually dazzling, I do enjoy it. I can understand when somebody says the bad moments take them out of it and they can't have a good time. I think some of that is going to depend on how much leeway you give a superhero movie, which does vary from person to person. I don't know a lot about The Flash, but I do know there was a lot of Jeez. cool stuff in this movie. Even if Alave has gotten to way too late. I can't say it works great, but for me, it works just well enough. I do gotta see this movie. Plus, I don't know, there's just something that feels less special when you know there's a ton of different versions of the character. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember- Oh well. He just died, didn't he? No. Huh. Well- That was- I'm still not following. <laughs> Guess that means I'm. Yeah. <laughs> well. Poor fly. Come on. <laughs> Dude, not blowing up the earth. That'd be weird. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Broski. Oh boy. Yeah, I think he's he's showing how we are getting really uh, you know, sick of this whole multiverse crap. I wonder what the hell the MCU is going to have to do now. They're going to change their They used to be innovators and everything, but they cannot do they cannot bring anything forward, man. Ugh. But oof, boy. Hopefully they'll be able to save themselves. Hopefully they'll save themselves from becoming stale. Uh, but yeah, again, let me know if you guys, if you guys want me to watch this movie, because I'd love to watch this movie, um, for the channel, uh, probably just might watch it, just, uh, just that, but yeah, that, that last scene, um, really, it, it really seems really sad, and I, I, I would really like to see it in full, so, uh, let me know what you thought of the movie, and let me know if you want me to review it for the channel, and remember, please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content, and subscribe if you think I deserve it, and I'll see you on the next video.